Hi all, hope you've been staying safe and well um, and enjoying the sunshine. Um, today's lesson we are going to be focusing on the next of our anthology poems and we're going to have a look at Walking Away by Cecil Day Lewis. Uh, same as last time, I'm going to be splitting the video up into different sections using the Mitzel grid. So we've got meaning, imagery, tone, structure and language. And once again, this isn't meant to be a complete lesson where you um, approach the poem called this is a lesson to supplement the notes that you have done in class with your class teacher uh, so I won't have time to discuss everything possibly could about this poem but this is a starting point to get you thinking about lots of different ideas so I hope it's useful um, and enjoy Okay, we'll start with reading through the poem just to have a look and get familiar with the um, the content of the poem. So, Walking Away by Cecil Day Lewis. It's 18 years ago, almost to the day, a sunny day with leaves just turning, the touchline's new ruled since I watched you play your first game of football, then like a satellite wrench from its orbit go drifting away. Behind a scatter of boys I can see you walking away from me towards the school, with the pathos of a half-fledged thing set free. Into a wilderness, the gate of one who finds no path where the path should be. That hesitant figure, eddying away like a winged seed loosened from its parent stem, has something I never quite grasped to convey about nature's give and take, the small, the scorching ordeals which fire one's irresolute clay. I've had worse partings, but none so gnaws at my mind still. Perhaps it is roughly saying what God alone could perfectly show, how selfhood begins with a walk in a way, and how love is proved in letting go. Okay, when we consider the meaning of this poem, we're looking at the sort of background information and what we know about the poet themselves before um, thinking about the, um, the the deeper understanding of what the poem is actually trying to say. So the poem by Cecil Day Lewis is looking at the relationship between father and a son. And the poem is actually dedicated to his first son, Sean, but was written shortly after um, Cecil Day Lewis had remarried and was having in the birth of his uh, second son. So we have this idea of the relationship between a father and son and how that changes over time. Uh, we have elements of guilt as the poem is about sending the son to boarding school and watching his son walk away from him towards the football field, possibly to play the first game of football. Um, so we have this growing maturity and independence of his son. We have the idea of the father feeling pride, but also feeling loss, feeling regret, feeling um, a, a longing to bring his son closer, to feel that he could keep his son close to him at all times. This is a nice little paired comparison that we can do with um, Mother Any Distance, where we have from the son's perspective about wanting that freedom and wanting that um, breaking away from his uh, from his parents. This is from the parental perspective, so that's a nice little comparison we could start to make there. Um, so overall, the meaning of the poem is looking at that parental relationship with uh, a child and looking at this idea of a growing independence and responsibility on the child's part and the idea of the loss that the parent is feeling at that time. Walking Away is a very, very rich poem when we consider imagery and we start to think about the images that the poet is creating for us. Um, there's a lot of imagery to do with the change of seasons and to do with natural imagery, which is one of Cecil Day Lewis's um, big themes if we look at his wider collection of poetry. So we talk about a sunny day with leaves just turning, so we have this autumnal season where there's a season of change. We have a winged seed loosened from a parent stem. The idea of a seed being uh, for necessity for growth has to leave the parent stem, um, but it, it's this separation process uh, where there's this fragile little seed that has to be uh, wrenched away from it. Uh, we also have the idea of something going eddying away. Now an eddy is a small gust of wind, so we have the, the idea of the wind taking something away um, from its um, 
from its original source. We also have imagery to do with closeness, such as a satellite being wrenched from its orbit. An orbit obviously requires a gravitational pull, it requires that closeness, and the, the verb wrenched is significant, it's being pulled away from the significance of that. Um, we also have the idea of firing clay, uh, this idea of what uh, for clay to um, become pottery, it has to be scorched, it has to be tested in fire. So the imagery of the fire representing the, uh, the challenges or the problems that one might face during life. Furthermore, we could consider the idea of the journey. So for example, we have one who finds no path where a path should be. Now, if we think about journeys um, in life, the path might represent a, a guide, so we know where we're going. And in this poem, we, we imagine a, a child finding no path, there is no direction. And likewise, that early image at the start of the poem, um, the child walking away towards the school with the, with the new lines, these new um, touch lines for the football pitch, which could represent guidance and um, the, the support of that, parent, the parental support moving away from this. Finally, we might want to consider this idea of youthfulness in child, childhood. Um, the phrase half-fledged thing set free. Something that's half-fledged is a baby. And fledging in the natural sense is a bird leaving the nest. Uh, and if you are fully fledged, you are ready to fly. You are ready to, uh, to, be, um, to be let loose and to be let wild. Now, if you are half-fledged, you are unprepared, you are unready. So we could consider this the child like a, a baby bird who is not yet ready for the wider world. Um, so like I said, there's lots and lots of lovely imagery within this poem and it is worth going through and just annotating and finding those examples of imagery within the poem. Tonally the poem is quite interesting because what we have is a poet who is writing a recollection of something that happened a long time ago and yet is still very, very uncertain about the outcome. The first line of the poem is, it is 18 years ago, almost to the day. So this is something that happened quite a while ago. This is something that happened um, a very long time ago in the poet's life. And yet we are still filled with the language of uncertainty. So we have, um, the, the, like we discussed in the imagery, things that are half-fledged, uh, eddying away. Um, the idea of the wilderness. So this idea of uncertainty is racked throughout the poem. Um, we have potentially ideas of sort of guilt and loss. So the poet describes something that gnaws at his mind still. So this is uh, changing the tense and talk about the present, but the fact that this is still an incident that is um, that is drawn into his mind that gnaws at him still, that he still feels responsible for and still feels um, uncertain about. The imagery is reflecting the tone, the fact that the responsibility, if you think about all the images that are meant to represent the father, we have the earth, we have the tree, um, all these sorts of strong, stable things, and the sun is represented by these more fragile and more vulnerable um, images, such as the satellite and the seed. Now, what we have here is the father feeling that responsibility and feeling the sense of um, fear as his son takes his first steps into becoming independent and he's still uncertain about uh, the decisions that he's made. By the end of the poem though, the poet has come to a realisation that the the growing independence of a child is a necessary process in growing up and maturity and that it is important for a child to have that um, in, to be able to grow and blossom as their own individual. We see that with the imagery, the fact that a seed needs to um, become independent from its parent tree for in order to grow and mature in its own. So by the end of the poem, we have this realisation, this volta, where the, the poet realises that how selfhood begins in walking away and love is proved in letting go. Now that's a significant change in the tone that it feels that actually to show the greatest love and to show the greatest um, responsibility for your child, you have to let them go at some point. He actually likens this process to a religious idea of God letting uh, Jesus go. So he said, as God alone could perfectly show, we have this sort of religious imagery being uh, put into place here and to show that this is a perfect example of parental love.
Structurally, the poet does some really interesting things with walking away. Um, initially, we have to consider who the poem is being spoken by and who the poem is being spoken to. So we have this first person recollection, the fact that um, I watched you walking away. The poet is talking about his own um, experiences and the poem is in a direct address to his son, dedicated to his son, Sean, like we spoke about at the very start of this video. And um, so watching you walk away. So this is a, a very personal poem and we could talk structurally about that and think about how this has been um, how has it been put together as a, a, a recollection, as a feeling about their relationship? Um, we might want to consider how this is a poem about a memory. We have, in fact, it's 18 years ago, which is quite significant. We're talking about something that happened quite a long time ago. And yet by the end of the poem, the poet has come to this final realisation, this conclusion, so that it's a debate, but it has come to some feeling that... Um, by letting his son go and grow into his own independent person, that's probably the best decision you could have made for him. If we're thinking about things like rhyme scheme, the poem has a regular rhyme scheme in the fact that the first, the third and the fifth line of each stanza in the four regular stanzas each rhyme. So for example, in stanza one, we have day, play and away. In stanza two, we have C, free and B. Now, what I would indicate with this with structure would be that Rhyme tends to indicate a completeness and an assuredness from the poet. So what we have potentially here is that the poet has had such a time to reflect on it that the um, the rhyme scheme is reflecting this perfect realisation, this perfect understanding of the situation because the poet has had these 18 years to reflect on his decisions. Even though he feels that it was a difficult decision, he has come to the conclusion that it was the right one for his son to be able to develop and grow and that's reflected in the use of the rhyme to give a sense of orderly completeness and understanding, which we could say juxtaposes actually with some of the imagery in there, which is to do with uncertainty. Okay, language within the poem, I would suggest the main thing we want to be looking for is the use of imagery. So as we talked about in the imagery section of this, keep looking out for those similes like a satellite wrench from its orbit, like a seed loosens from its parent stem. Um, and obviously the metaphorical language that goes hand in hand with it, things like with the, um, the fire uh, which scorches one's irresolute clay. We have lots of imagery in there and that's that'd be the main starting point I would be looking at with language. However, what we can do is we can focus and narrow down a little bit more and think look at things, for example, like the verb choice that the poet's using. So things like um, wrenched and gnaws. The significant verb choices here suggesting something that was painful or something that was difficult. We might also consider, if we're looking at the um, use of language, the use of natural imagery, there are lots of references to seeds, lots of references to trees and to um, to leaves. Like We've got lots of ideas to do with growth, so there is a, the language of semantic field to do with growth and the natural world here. Um, we might want to also consider the use of religious language. So we have what well, God alone could perfectly show and the idea of love. So by the end of the poem, we've got a lot of religious imagery suggesting this um, sort of perfect parental relationship in reflection. Um, we could also consider the use of pronouns, the fact that we have the, um, the I as the poet being um, th their own personal reflections and the you as a very much a direct address to that individual person that it's very clearly been spoken to his son and offered as a, um, a discussion about their relationship and their feelings. Okay, for you to consider are two essay questions here, um, one of which is specifically focused on walking away, another one which is looking at a comparison between uh, walking away and another poem of your choice. If you're working your way through the videos, then potentially a good one to compare to for this would be Mother Any Distance, but obviously if you've got wider understanding of the anthology, then feel free to pick any poem you choose. Um, have a look at both essay questions. If you'd like to have a go at doing it as an essay plan, looking at the key quotations and evidence and comparisons you would make, or the key explorations you would make, that's great. If you'd like to attempt it as an essay question, then please um, get in touch and um, send it to me and I'll mark it for you and um, have a look at them and then stay tuned and we'll have today's film recommendation.
film recommendation today is a reboot of a franchise that was going nowhere that it started to go a bit stale and get a bit silly here it had invisible cars and really bad surfing cgi um, and that reboot is casino royale uh, daniel craig's first bond film um, and it really got back to basics with what made bond great in the first place and um, there's less of the really silly gadgets and more of the um spy drama the bathroom fight scene at the start is absolutely exceptional and the uh the parkour run across the crane is an absolutely outstanding scene it has a fantastic villain with uh, mads mickelson doing his best bleeding eye um it's a fantastic film it's a really really amazing bond was one of my favorites um so check it out until next time stay safe and uh next time we're gonna have a look at follower i think <laughs>